I know that uh, I'm changing up your schedule a little bit, so I appreciate you accommodating me. Um, my name is Samina Mustafa. I'm running as a progressive Democrat in the 5th Congressional District for the U.S. House of Representatives. I'm challenging the incumbent, Mike Quigley. The primary is coming up in 10 days, so uh, I, I just encourage you all to, to make sure that you uh, are informed on the issues. You seem like a very uh, informed group. Um, the fifth district is actually the most educated district in the state. So feel good about yourselves. No, I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, So I, I want to share a little bit about my story, um, why I'm running, and uh, take a few of the questions. I, again, I have, I'm a bit of a tight schedule, but I do want to explain sort of what the stakes are in the race and my background. Uh, so my Indian Muslim immigrant parents came here in the early 60s. Uh, they came here to study and they decided to stay to pursue the American dream. My father actually worked, as I was saying to some folks earlier, um, we, we moved to the city, we moved to Edgebrook, which is not far from here, so they could take jobs, uh, we, uh, they could take jobs with the city. My father uh, worked at O'Hare uh, in the Department of Aviation. My mother was a pediatrician um, at the Uptown City Clinic. So they instilled in me a commitment to public service. I, myself, have volunteered at a domestic violence shelter, I uh, helped elderly patients at St. Joseph's Hospital in Lakeview, and I eventually got a job running a Planned Parenthood on the west side of Chicago in the Austin neighborhood. Um, it's that commitment to my community um, that I'm standing here before you to run for Congress. Uh, most recently, I represented small businesses and nonprofits as a commercial real estate broker. I advocated for organizations that help immigrants, refugees, women and girls, um, sexual assault survivors. These were my clients, and I would advocate for them, and I would be your advocate in Congress. Um, I am challenging uh, the incumbent, Mike Quigley. Mike Quigley is also a Democrat. I'm challenging the Democratic primary. Um, I'm challenging because while we, he is good on a couple of issues, on uh, issues like freedom of choice and LGBT rights, on those issues we agree. He's been great on those. Here's where we differ. Mike Quigley voted for the largest defense in bill in history, giving Trump billions more than he asked for. He voted to reauthorize FISA 702, like this, and which gave the Trump administration the ability to spy on Americans without a warrant. He has voted against financial regulation and consumer protection, most recently the Mortgage Choice Act, which took the caps off um, fees to borrowers. Get you another one now. And, and lastly, he has, situated. has not supported Medicare for All, which is a bill that's been in Congress it has wide support amongst Democratic voters and the public in general. They want a federal health care system, and they want health care for all, and he's not supportive of it. Now, Mike Whitley has described himself as a centrist and a hawk. So some of these are very much in line with his moderate and hawkish views. But the other thing that people are shocked about, and I've been speaking to thousands of voters, is part of the reason he has taken these votes is he's taken millions of dollars from corporate PACs and special interests and voted with their interests in mind. He's gotten money, as I was saying earlier, from General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin and voted to uh, renew contracts with companies that pro provide joint strike fighters, like Lockheed Martin does, that have been on the chopping block for years. $170 billion has been spent on this program that could have been spent on other things. The most recent National Defense Authorization Act included $66 billion for what's known as the Overseas Contingency Operations Fund. That is the DOD's, that's the Department of Defense slush fund. $66 billion would have paid for about 60 years of the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting for about 60 years. But that got authorized again. Walk He's got money from insurance company PACs and has one of his biggest funders is a healthcare private equity sector. And he has not supported Medicare for All, which would essentially um, wipe out insurance companies' uh, fragmented control of our healthcare system. And he's taken money from big banks and voted with their interests, like Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase. It's time for an untainted voice in Congress. Um, I've gotten uh, widespread support. I've been endorsed by a national organization called the Justice Democrats, which endorsed me because I have a progressive platform and I refuse corporate PAC money. 
I've been endorsed by Northside Democracy for America, an organization that was founded originally by Howard Dean, has a local chapter. They endorsed Mike Dooley in 2009, and this year they endorsed me with 94% of their members flipping the endorsement uh, to, to our campaign. Next, I was endorsed by an organization I think that many of you are familiar with, their Independent Voters of Illinois Independent Precinct Organization. I'm the only congressional challenger that they have endorsed this cycle. Um, and I, I think all of you are familiar just with Charles' activity, but it's, as you know, it's um, one of the organizations that endorsed Barack, Barack Obama in his first election win. Furthermore, I've been endorsed by an organization founded by Eleanor Roosevelt, Americans for Democratic Action, and finally by Vote Pro Choice, which is an organization that endorsed me over Quigley because of my support for Medicare for All, because I believe choice is something that should be available to, those, to all of those, whether they can afford it or not. But the most important endorsement is that of the voters. Uh, one of the voters that was really heartening to me to get her support um, is a woman that knows Mike Quigley personally. She's known him for years, she's contributed to his campaign, and this year she and her husband voted for me. And she contributed to my campaign because she knew I would be a bold, progressive, and untainted voice in Washington. And that's a really um, uh, you know, uh, uh, humbling and honoring support. And it's why we actually outraised not only, I only not outraised my challengers in January and February, I outraised Mike Quigley. So we have gotten great momentum. We've got folks who all day were phone banking, grabbing literature, just like you're seeing on your tables, and hopefully everyone's gotten a copy, um, where I lay out the case. I sent a letter to 50,000 voters in the district explaining who I am, why I'm running, what the stakes are, and we've been getting calls and emails from all over the district. I got a call from a woman who's been a nurse for over 40 years. She's actually not far from her. She lives in diversity in Western. She said, I am going to vote for you because you understand what I, as a caregiver, I've been a nurse, I had to bury my parents. You understand what it, what it means to have access or give health care for all. And that's vitally important. She's like, I've seen my patients die needlessly. Um, another gentleman is a, a lung cancer survivor, lived in the district for 44 years. He was so inspired, so moved, and he called and, and shared his story. His grandmother was someone who had to pay the whole tax of Mississippi. He never misses an election. And this year, he's going to honor us with, our, with his support and, and a vote. These are the kinds of stories that I share with you because I believe that what we need is someone who is in touch with the community. We've been doing forums across the district. Mike Quigley, today was the first day he actually showed up to a forum. He's been um, absent of that. We need a present, progressive, inclusive, bold voice in Washington. And that's why I'm running. And I have a few minutes for questions, and I'm, I'm happy to, to chat briefly on um, the to I have one uh, question. Uh, what was the uh, reason that uh, Mike uh, Quigley uh, gave for not being for okay? Medicare at yeah, all? Yeah, I, and his um, his responses have not been very um, explicit. They haven't been particularly clear, um, and that's one of the reasons. And, and even today, when he was at the farm that you also were at, Pat, um, there was actually only a few minutes given. He was given 20 minutes up front and did not stay for the town hall forum that all of us, the rest of the candidates, stayed for. Um, so no one was able to actually ask him that question. So he hasn't really given a direct answer, um, except to say that he feels that we need to. Um, uh, govern towards the middle and work with Republicans. Bipartisanship in and of itself is not a bad thing, but it's a bipartisan coalition that's kept Medicare for All from passing. It's a bipartisan coalition that gave Trump warrantless fine. So bipartisanship with this GOP is, is not only troubling, it can be dangerous. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, two things. Uh, it said here <clears throat> that you worked at the uh, Planned Parenthood. Could you tell us a little bit about that? And tell us uh, about, a little bit about your husband, your background. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I am married. Uh, very happily married. Um, so at the Planned Parenthood, I was I started actually as a medical assistant. I started seeing patients. I was in a clinical role. And very shortly after I started, I started running the clinic. So I was both managing the clinic, scheduling um, staff, hiring and firing staff, handling inventory, and still seeing patients. And so it was uh, a very <laughs> intense job of being able to, to balance both those things. 
Um, the, the types of patients we saw, it was a Title X federally funded clinic. So when people talk about defunding Planned Parenthood at the federal level, they would have shut down the clinic I worked at. Um, what we did at that clinic, it was a family planning clinic. So it was, there were no abortions portion, uh, uh, provided there. It was strictly, essentially, primary care and reproductive uh, health services. So uh, we would um, do pap smears and um, breast exams and give birth control and counseling. And so that was um, the bulk of our, of our services. And for many of our patients who were aged 15 to 18, young black women, we were the only safe, confidential, professional health care that they had access to. Um, next, and your question on my husband. Um, so we uh, have been married since 2010, and he is in soccer. He is a um, he's a he's a he's a, a double E grad from Urbana Champaign. So um, he worked at Apple actually in two different stints. One when Steve Jobs wasn't there, and one when he was there. So he was. It's one of the, the cool things he gets to tell me is like I got to be in meetings with Steve Jobs. So what I'm just trying to tell you is very smart. Guy. <laughs> Hi. This uh, shooter in Florida. Uh, the police went to his house 39 times, and they, they didn't arrest him 39 times. And this uh, promise program, where they're not allowed to uh, uh, arrest or expel students because these uh, students uh, have to have promise to get jobs in the future, and a, a police record would, would uh, be detrimental. Okay, but uh, uh, what I'm saying is... Uh, uh, this program came from Chicago on the south side. It came from the, the, the bad actors. They, they, they didn't suspend them and they didn't don't arrest them. Well, what are you going to do about that? I think something should be done. Well, I think you know there's there's a couple of different things that you're talking about, which is you know addressing um, mental health and, and having counseling for for young people. And if you had a system like Medicare for all, you would have things like mental health counseling. But the, the issue of, is really with guns and the availability of guns and keeping guns from being freely available. For someone like um, that young man, for, to, for him to be able to get a, a gun, he had a history of violence, he had a history of illness. That's where you would say, you know, I, I'm, I'm running against somebody who's accused of, of domestic violence. In my mind, anyone who's been convicted of domestic violence should not be allowed to buy a gun because they are more likely to inflict violence on other people. Um, there's bipartisan support on lots of things that would have prevent us, prevented all these things. Background checks, you know, gun show loopholes, um, creating a gun registry. All of these things are have wide bipartisan support. Why are they not passing? Because of money and politics. The NRA is holding our legislative bodies hostage. If we were able to get money out of politics, there's so many things that we could pass. Gun control, net neutrality, Medicare for all. These are all things that are related to having our our, our legislative bodies be tainted. Backing up. Back yeah, up. Yeah. Uh, I thought I saw. Yeah, I got a, just a couple of comments. You know, I would keep guns off the street. We didn't have problems until all this carry stuff happened. Everybody thinks they could carry guns off. Question, yeah, Mike. What's, what's the question? What's the question? <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of green and environmental initiatives do you have? Uh, quickly, and Mayor 1% want to increase aviation and pollution and carcinogens out of O'Hare. Right. What kind of uh, green, yeah. uh, sustainable type of initiatives? you have. Yeah. And then uh, two quick, real quick things. Uh, I wouldn't bring up LBGTQ stuff. People don't care about that. People don't care about Obama's old, you know, news. And he was big Wall Street losing liberal. What's the question? What's the question? Well, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to answer. So I'm going to, so I'm going to, okay. Environmental initiative. Can I have to figure out? Yeah, so, so I, I, okay, here's what you, you probably already know, Mike. That Quigley is actually quite good on the environment. He's been an advocate, but I think we can always do better. There's actually a bill in Congress right now called the Off Act, um, getting us off fossil fuels by 2035. That requires a lot of innovation and investment in research and innovation. And so that's that's one of the things. As far as the LBG, LGBT issue, yeah. I, I'm I'm I, that is nobody that, cares about that. Um, actually, I do. Actually, I do. I do. Um, I'm committed to it. I've got a 100% rating by Windy City Times. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to it. I protested firings of people who were suspected of being gay at Cracker Barrel. It's, it's something that's incredibly important to me. And this is, this is an, a district that not only values diversity, 
it sees it sees it as one of our strengths. So I, I would have to disagree with you there. Who else has a question? Yeah, I thought you were yeah, a lady over here. Yeah, did you say, I, I, I thought I heard you say in a, that, that you were running against a person who had been convicted of domestic violence? No, there's, so the, in, there's a, a couple of other um, opponents, primary challengers in this race. Oh. And there's a gentleman named uh, Ben Wolf, who in oh, the see. paper it has um, been uh, outed as someone who has uh, padded his resume, misrepresented his credentials, and um, has had several people come out publicly to say that they um, okay. he was a, they were abused. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't understand what you said. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thanks Please. for the clarification. Okay. Charlie. Yes, uh, Miss Candidate, the bus stop, the bus down the street will stop running before the college complex ends tonight, and I don't know how to get home. Oh, no. Because I'm a transit, I'm a transit dependent. Okay, and I'm going to come does back that, to my next event, I'll give you a ride home. Does that concern you? <laughs> Charles, help me out, I'll give you a ride home. <laughs> There's public transit concerns. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and to me, actually, the thing that bothers me the most about the, the transit system in Chicago, the buses obviously are, 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 are accessible. The fact that we have a single CTA station that is not accessible is, is absurd. Every single train station should be accessible. Downtown, we don't have every single. I uh, used to work right off Adams and Wabash. That is the this train station that leads people to the Art Institute, one of our best institutions. And if you are, if you have, if you have a stroller or a wheelchair, you have to get off at another stop. That's we we need Can to answer that. that. Sure. Costs, yeah, no, I understand. It costs forty million dollars to renovate an L station, uh, yeah. and the feds, the money comes from the feds. The feds, Trump just cut it completely to zero. Yeah, no, I mean, we don't, so that's a, my, my, my take, the take home message there is elections have consequences, you know, more, almost, yeah, I mean, almost have, well, especially if you're, if you have somebody right now, like Mike Quigley, who's voting with Republicans on things like defense spending, defense spending is more than half the discretionary federal budget. So you're giving them the runway to say, oh, we're overspending, we got to cut something. That's... We don't need that. We need someone who is who is is willing to push back on bloated military budgets and not vote with the Republicans on that. David. Oh. Uh, no, I you were you on. Yeah, you can okay, you can do Go it. Ahead, Dave. Uh yeah, uh, you talked about uh, uh guns being taken off the streets and so yeah. forth. Get them off the street. Uh yeah. Mr. I don't carry a goddamn gun. I don't want it. Mike. Mr. Jefferson said that uh, uh, the 300 years ago. he said that the, tri the the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of tyrants and patriots, and so that uh, uh, in effect, uh, by as long as guns are around, from time to time there will be. Uh, certain things that will happen where that will result in people uh, getting killed. Uh, and you talk about eliminating guns. I and, didn't, I never said that. No, yeah. I never said that. That's, that's not, that's not what I said. I said we, we have common sense, common sense gun control that we can pass and that there's wide support. So uh, I'm sorry if you, you misheard me, but I, but I did not say that. We have agreement on background checks on eliminating gun show loopholes, on creating a gun registry. There's a lot of support for that. What we don't need are assault weapons on the street. We don't need bump stocks. There is widespread support for that. So We got a couple more minutes here. Uh, who hasn't had a question yet? Jonathan in the back. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you're running against Mike Quigley. And I wanted to ask you a question about the bill that he and many others voted on last, or two months ago approximately giving broad latitude to spy on the, the people of the United States. That is disturbing because we know we're not afraid anymore post 9-11 like the Bush administration. Question. This issue. No, 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 absolutely. And I referenced that earlier. Um, I thought that was one of the, um, the most uh, troubling votes he took recently. In fact, 
After that vote, there is a blog, uh, 538, which many of you are familiar with. They have been doing a, have been tracking all the, the Democrats and the Republicans in the House and the Senate to see how conservative their votes are. After that vote, Quigley was ranked as the 10th most conservative Democrat in the U.S. House of Representatives. And he still ranks as in the top 25% of the most conservative. In fact, not only that, the Tribune cited that vote when they endorsed him. They cited his vote taking away our civil liberties when they endorsed him, which is absurd. This is a quick follow-up. So he, yeah. he's like the poster child for Democrats in name only. Yeah. See, that is, uh, and that's the thing. It's, he's pro-choice, and he's pro-LGBT, so he gets, he's, he's not, people aren't looking past those votes. These are all very much conservative votes and very much aligned with the Republican agenda. Take one one more question here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, th there's a representative in Southern Illinois named John Shimkus. Yes. And uh, he has sponsored, along with other people, a uh, House House Resolution uh, 3053 that would uh, op that would give money to relicense. Um, Yucca Mountain, so that uh, it could be used as a, a, a deep geologic repository for high-level waste. And uh, along with that, they'd have to open uh, uh, interim storage in um, western Texas and eastern New Mexico. They're sort of contiguous there. And um, I just wonder, um, this would involve a lot of transportation of extremely dangerous nuclear waste all through the country. And I, I wonder if you'd mind commenting on, uh, number one, the fact that this bill comes from uh, the most nuclear state in the Union, and uh, that it's extremely dangerous as far as transportation goes, and the idea that interim storage, storage is interim, because Yucca Mountain, it would, it, frankly, Yucca Mountain's never going to be developed. Yeah, I mean that's that's a troubling thing about this administration in terms of like of, of thinking um, about the communities and the entire um, the country in terms of any environmental impact, the the impacts on the communities, and so that to me is not something that I would I would co-sign. Um, so um, I would have to look into some more research, but it, to me in general the problem with this administration is they're completely ignoring public safety and and not legislating for that. Are you that for thing. nuclear energy? Yes. Yeah, I have a few minutes. My, 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 hot, my uh, Pat's got okay. another question then. Go ahead. Yeah, you alluded uh, several times to uh, the bloated military budget, and there's no question that it is. But what do you see? I mean, we live in the world where a lot of bad guys want to do us harm big time. I understand that. Uh, what do you see as the ideal? Uh, level to keep ourselves safe and yet at the same time to not drive ourselves into bankruptcy buying weapons we hopefully we never have to use yeah I think what we um, unfortunately right now um, and Pat you, you seem um, I know you're very versed in this we don't actually have a system that we can audit uh, we can't audit the defense uh, the, the Department of Defense so we actually don't know uh, some of the efficacy of, of the things, but there are some things that are already well known, like the F-35 Joint Strike Fighters and the um, LCS ships, the littoral combat ships that I referenced earlier when I was speaking to um, the folks there. These are things that are well known that have uh, product defects. The other corollary to that is that we know that in multiple parts around the world, we have um, emissions going on without a clear, we have, we have military actions without a clear mission. And we're not aware of how many troops. Um, there's been a lot of like, I think there's been this many. We don't have, we are not, aren't aware of what's going on, how many troops are there, things like the actions in Niger. And so there isn't, um, there's been sort of a, what's missing from Congress is a willingness to check executive power on this. And that, I think, again, going back to the National Defense Authorization Act, is the, that vote was particularly problematic because with a, a president like Trump, who is ready, he's ginned up, he's ready to, 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 to pick a fight with anybody, and by, by signaling 
that um, by giving that um, record defense spending bill authorization to Trump, you're signaling that you're willing, you're saying go to war. And so that to me is the problem, is that you have endless wars and, and, and a hawkishness that Mike Quigley has admitted himself. So um, I think I'm good that we have to kind of, we have to, I, I do have to leave. But right. thank you, I appreciate it. One more it. question, you're Cubs or Sox fan? Uh oh, Cubs or Sox fan? Yeah. Um, I'm, married, I'm married to a Cubs fan. Good. I'm sorry. I don't have to wait. Where's the where's the socks? Thank you. Oh, thank I'm so you. sorry, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank thank you. Our speaker again for a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.